Okay, let's have the solution to example 18a. This is about force envelopes. So, force envelopes, or a force envelope is defined as the range of values of a particular function. It may be reaction, moment, deflection, shear, the like, as the moving live loads crosses the beam or a structural element. So this is used to to predict the possible range of values that will develop in a structural element whenever live loads move across the span of an element. So from there, the structural engineer will be able to say that nothing will happen to the structural element as long as the designated live loads will cross the, st the span of the structural element. So for determinate beam and structures, we can easily compute the minimum and the maximum function values. So here, this is an, a determinate beam, so there's no need to employ deflection methods here. But for an indeterminate structure or beam, then we have to use uh, deflection methods, most especially the double integration method is very basic for, for indeterminate structures like beams. So I'll give you that technique right away. So we have to apply or remove the support at B, then push that support and and expect the corresponding uh, rotation or pivoting of this beam when the structure is in So this is the expected uh, rotation of this beam when the support is removed and then an upward force is applied. Uh, of course, you do not continue it, just a portion. Just enough for the beam to pivot about this roller support here. So this is the expected shape of this elastic curve or the neutral axis of the beam. So meaning, when you place the moving live loads here, by the way, the beam itself represents the dead load and it is fixed in position and value. So the 3 kN per meter load is here. It is distributed along the entire span of the beam. But for live load, because it is moving, you can place it anywhere. And by this figure, it means that to maximize the, the reaction at B, because this is positive above the horizontal, that means that you have to place all the live loads here if there's no restriction to its length. In order to minimize the, the reaction at B, because this portion is negative, you look at it, it's below the horizontal. So that means that you have to place the live load here. So by the first definition, we now have the idea in order to compute the minimum uh, minimum reaction at B, we have to place the live load at this portion here negative so that this reaction will be reduced because it will produce negative or downward uh, value for the reaction here, right? If there is, if this is, if this is negligible, then this weight will counter. So it will counterbalance. So it will rotate that way. So it will reduce the reaction at B. Then analyze the beam. So we have to sum up moment about the about support C equals zero. So we clockwise positive. So we have R B minimum times ten plus sixteen times two times one equals three kilonewton per meter times sixteen. The entire length of the beam is sixteen, and half of sixteen is eight supposedly. But because we sum up moment about C, so the moment arm is just six. So RB minimum times 10 
plus 16 times 2 times 1, then minus 3 times 16 times 6 equals 0. So, RB minimum can now be solved. It is equal to 25.6 kN. Now, for maximum reaction at B, I told you that we, we have to load the portion of the entire the portion of the entire span of the beam or the portion of the beam that is positive so meaning this portion here is above the horizontal so this is positive up to here so the live load should be placed from the left up to this support here so the diagram would look like that that's the way how to place the live load and the reaction at B would be maximum for that case. So summation moment about C again call zero clockwise positive. So RB maximum times 10, then minus 16 times the length of the live load would be 14, then times 7, then minus 3 times 16 times 6 call zero. So RB times 10 minus 16 times 14 times 7. Then minus 3 times 16 times 6 for the dead load equals 0. Solving for RB max 185.6. Therefore, the force envelope for reaction at B. So the possible uh, reaction at B would range from 25.6 to 185.6 kN. As long as the live load is 16, the expected live load is 16 kN per meter. So that would be the range of values of reaction at B. For the second situation, the length of the live load this time is fixed at 6 meters. In the first case, the length of the live load is unlimited. Now, why is it that the 16 kilonewton live load is only 2 meters? Actually, it is unlimited, but we do not place portion of the live load here to minimize the reaction at B. The other length of the 16 kilonewton live load, if it is more than 2 meters in length, would be somewhere here. And this portion here is not a space. It is, it's not an overhang or it's not a, a cliff, but there is a road here. So, for example, this is a bridge. That is the ground already. So I'll show here the ground where there is or the portion of the live load is now counteracted by the ground surface. So it is the ground that will support the live load for that case. So that portion will no longer transmit the effect to the leaf for that case. So therefore, for when L is 6, so 2 meters will be here, the other 4 meters will be in the ground. Because we cannot put the live load here because it will increase the reaction of B. We want the minimum. So RB is minimum is still 25.6 kN because the figure is remains the same. The other 4 will be supported by the ground. For RB maximum, so since this is the portion that has maximum ordinate, so we should place one end of the 6 meter length live load here. The other would be on the span. So this is the arrangement of the live load when its length is limited to 6 meters. So this portion is 4 meters because that's already 4 and this is 2 meters. And the dead load of course remains 3 kN per meter. Again, summation moment about point C equals 0. Lockwise as positive. So RV maximum times 10. Then minus 16 times 6. So the distance of the centroid here is because this is 10 and 3, so positive from this end, but this distance is only 1, so 11. Then minus 3 times 16 times 6 equals 0. So RV maximum equals 134.4 kilonewtons for that case. Of course, this is lesser than the RV maximum in the first case because the length of the live load is limited. So for the force envelope, it is 25.6 kN less than equal to Rb less than equal to 134.4 kN.